when do you or should you put your house in a trust? So I'm just, I'm going to take that question now because I think it's really important that we answer that one. My discussion today is talking about people who need Medicaid during their lifetime, the need long-term care during their lifetime. So let's start. I'll answer that question first by uh, talking about a couple than a single person. For a couple, if you have your house in a revocable living trust, then disregard what I just told you about it being a non-countable asset. It is countable. A revocable living trust changes the character of your house from being non-countable to countable. Does that make sense? No, it's completely form over substance, but that's Washington's rules. So if you have a, a revocable living trust, an RLT, and we're doing Medicaid planning for you, we're gonna take the house out of the trust and put it in the name of the well spouse. We have to do that. It's the only way you can qualify for Medicaid. We do estate planning for couples through having wills with testamentary supplemental needs trusts. That is estate planning documents and a plan that takes effect after somebody has died. And we're not talking about that today. I just wanna share enough with you to understand the difference that when we say have a will with a supplemental needs trust in it, so you protect your spouse when you're gone so that the assets of the deceased spouse will pay to that trust through your will, through the probate, and they'll be in the trust for your, the spouse who survives you and Medicaid will never count them. It's a fantastic asset protection tool, the will with this trust. But that happens after death. And what we're talking about today is Medicaid planning before either of the spouses has passed on. When the question is about when do you put your house in a trust, there are so many different kinds of trust. I just described two, revocable living trust, which is what we call a lifetime or an inter vivos trust, a testamentary trust, which is one through your will. There's also what are called irrevocable trusts, trusts during your lifetime, for example, that you create to put your house in a trust so that that house is never subject to the state's lien now, even and remember, the house is not countable, assuming it's not in a revocable trust. We're talking about irrevocable. But sometimes people want to put their house in an irrevocable trust and they want to do it five years before they ever anticipate a needing care. And the reason that they do that is they want to make sure their house is protected. And we have done plans for single people who have a house. They want to make sure their house goes to their kid without the state getting any of it. And so we'll, and they're five years plus in advance of needing any kind of long-term care. So we'll create an irrevocable trust. The problem with that is that they cannot be their uh, trustee. They can't be a beneficiary. In other words, if they want to live in their house, because maybe the kid is the beneficiary and maybe somebody else is the trustee. This person has given away their asset. They have to for this kind of planning. Um, they actually have to pay rent on their house. So sometimes that's not what people want to do. So sometimes it's good planning. Sometimes it's absolutely not good planning. So when you're talking about a trust, the question needs to be, what kind of trust and where are you at in life and does it make sense and what are your priorities but typically for medicaid planning typically we are not putting houses or other assets into an irrevocable trust let me back that up a little bit much more common with a use of an irrevocable trust it's also called a medicaid five-year look back trust is that we will put the lake cabin in the trust or other legacy property in this irrevocable trust. Something that isn't the home you live in, but place that is really important to you that you would like to see continue on to the next generation and the next generation. If you do that in advance of five years, you can do that. You can put it into an irrevocable trust. There's lots of planning that we can do, and uh, we can do planning you know, five years in advance of needing care, we can do planning at the time of need. Um, but obviously some types of strategies are only available to us if they're done well in advance 
for example, putting the lake property into an irrevocable trust, or it doesn't even need to be put in an irrevocable trust. It can just be gifted outright. That's another option too.